come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast or a movie talk podcast. It comes your way every Saturday with the, whether you're ready for it or not. Uh, do whatever you can to help us out. Become the world's fastest podcast. By going over to hit that like, subscribe, star rating, all of that stuff. What's the review? All of that stuff helps it fun. By other like my folks like you. Uh, these are the internet radio superstars. Holly. John. Michaela. And I'm Con. And tonight we did something that's never been done before. We watched... A movie chosen by John. What did we watch for the second time tonight? <laughs> a, a movie chosen by Travis. Uh, uh, we watched Spookies from the year uh, 1985, 86, 87. Directed by. <laughs> directed by. Directed by three people. All right. Ah, that so explains you know, a lot. <laughs> so that's always a good sign. Let me give you their names: Thomas Doran, Brendan Faulkner, and Eugenie Joseph. Okay. Well, there's a story here about this movie spookies oh is there a story and well yes, indeed there's also the question of why are we watching spookies again because if you go back to december uh what was it 29th or 19th of 2015 you can yes. hear the saturday night freak show talk about spookies but you we're can doing indeed. it again how come to be fair uh it's half of the people that are currently here talking this about is it. true now this is, uh, I mean, this is my fault. Um, Your uh, fault. I, okay. I, I got a, <laughs> I got, uh, uh, like I said before, I got a hair on my ass. Um, uh, Vinegar Syndrome on Black Friday came out with, for the first time ever on Blu-ray, Spookies. Now, we had watched this five years ago in a not-so-great transfer of the film. I think we watched um, it on YouTube. I think we did. Um, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the best presentation. Uh, since then, we've gotten the Blu-ray, and we've also gotten uh, loads more information on the film itself and why it is what it is. Um, and so <laughs> I thought about it, um, and I thought I th- uh, that uh, I thought it was time for a uh, a re-review, a revisit of this material, considering it had been five years since we first went through it, um, and there are two people on the podcast who have not seen the movie. And we have a, a wealth more knowledge about the film. Uh, so I figured I could get away with revisiting Spookies. All right, we need to gonna... put a safe search block on your phone for any vinegar syndrome content. This is uh, this is it. <laughs> I looked through everything. <laughs> I have Tammy and the T-Rex and I have Spookies. And that is what it. there is. You, no Kathy's curse. Yeah. That's on hell like, comes uh, to Frogtown isn't coming Sorry. back to the freak show. No. Hmm, wow. I mean, I didn't see it the first time, so hey, you should <laughs> stop talking. You're just going to do it to yourself, Colin. Uh huh. Sean's a wild man, a wild card out there. If you agree yeah. with this decision, direct all your email and to Sean at Saturday Night Freak Show. Oh, uh, okay. Colin so, and Sean Tyler uh, Spookies um, is a movie that has a, well, I don't even know if it has a substantial cult following. Would you say it's, um, well, I mean, I guess it does. I think it does. It's because of the fact that it was unavailable for so long. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Unavailable. Well, it, it was available, uh, uh, very limited, hard to find. Um, it was also, and uh, well, it was on people, VHS. Think, so it was available yes. on VHS back then. So if you didn't have your VHS tape, then it was, right? Did that, it ever make yeah, it to then DVD? That was it. I don't think this one made it to DVD. If it did, it was um, uh, a very bad transfer um, and also in very limited supply. Okay. Um, so the movie, and then it, uh, I believe after its brief theatrical run, yes, Spookies was given a theatrical run, I believe in yes, 1987 or 88. I think it was 87. Okay, when it was finally released. But... Um, the, and then the movie played on USA up all night, and a lot of people got to see it that way because it played ad nauseum for years and years. I guess they kept bringing it back, um, but it didn't always. It wasn't always called Spookies, and it didn't start out that way. It did not. It started out as uh, a movie called Twisted Souls. Uh, Holly and Michaela, having you two having not seen this before, would you believe that this is actually two movies forced into one? What? 
Yes. No. No way. It's brand new information. <laughs> um, so uh, what part, where do you think the lines are in this movie? Like, what do you think is one movie and what do you think is the other? And is it is it totally obvious? I mean, it's pretty seamless, but I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> try. Please try. The, so the kid stuff at the beginning is definitely like a separate movie, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> because when I was watching that, I was like, this feels like a really long, cold open. <laughs> right? And then it just kind of stops. Yeah. You could say that about a lot of this movie. And then it just kind of stops. Yeah, that's true. And then the other is with all the quote unquote teenagers mm. in the cemetery. <laughs> the teenagers and their dad. Is that what you're going with? Okay. <laughs> oh, well, no. I, I, so I don't think that's what it is. But <laughs> but it, oh, again, I have a theory on that. Well, for um, the folks at home who haven't seen this before. It's basically uh, it, it, the setup is like every single 80s, well, I guess a little slasher movie or something. It really does seem to key off of maybe like the evil dead. It's basically we're going to take a group of people. We're going to have some reason to go to an old haunted house. And only in the spookies case, this is going to be a house that's full of uh, fun little monsters or big monsters, right? Full of spookies. Full of spookies. The spookies. <laughs> of the title who are the yes. twisted souls of the original title uh i mean the tw- i mean i think those are also the spookies um it was like you're saying the movie started off as a movie called twisted souls um there were three directors um the first two original directors tom doran and brennan faulkner um they started filming twisted souls and that's the movie you see with all the quote-unquote teenagers in it and all the monsters uh, throughout we say um, teenagers they, they top out at like 50 years old i mean the oldest guy's got to be like 50 <laughs> and the youngest ones have got to be like 27 yeah at now, the youngest did they say they were teenagers how do these people no. know each other uh this my theory was they were all like they said in in the car they were all at a party together um a fight happened they got kicked out <coughs> And the older couple, couple um, were convinced to go to another party with Duke. With fucking yeah. Duke. So this is a Duke that refers to himself in the third person constantly. Duke will provide. <laughs> He's a cool guy, Duke. All everybody oh, yeah. heavy New York uh, accents. This is a very uh, New York movie. Uh, it was financed. There was, there was a British girl though, wasn't there? One of them was British. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's British. Yeah. A really well, performative it? British accent. Yeah, the, Everyone's very performative in this movie, quote unquote. <laughs> like a soap man. Like well, a soap opera. The financer of the movie, he was also British. This is the way that I heard this story, Sean. You'll have to Michael Lee. Me if I, yes. Yeah. Okay. And so he ran some video company or something over in the UK? He ran the infamous Vipco uh, video label over in the UK. Infamous um, for? It's infamous in the UK. It's infamous for uh, um, the early age. He started as a uh, uh, movie. He used to go. It used to be cheap to go and rent the films of movies, and he would rent them, uh, uh, dub them to a one-inch tape, and then just sell the tapes to other people. And he made a like a good amount of money in doing this. Um, and then eventually, he opened up his own label, Vipco, and he was responsible for um, uh, distributing a lot of the video nasties of the 1980s. Uh, at a time when you couldn't get them anywhere else, his label would distribute them. Oh, okay, okay. So Evil so, Dead probably or something like that came out uh, in Vipco. A lot of like The Burning, Driller Killer, Cannibal Holocaust, oh, wow. uh, Zombie Flesh Eaters, The Nostril Picker. Look that one up. Uh, <laughs> Coming Beyond, to the Saturday Shogun Night Free Show. <laughs> um, and then hundreds of movies you've never heard of but sound like the nastiest stuff ever. Zombie movies, cannibal movies, just low grade horror movies. And he was responsible for finding these, um, and putting them out there because in the UK, um, they didn't regulate, um, video like they did film. So like video was like the wild, wild west in the 1980s. So he would acquire these movies, um, that were banned pretty much. And he would, uh, put them out there on VHS for people to see in different cuts of these tapes. Um, and he made a lot of money doing this. And so he, you know, we, from that, he also went on to produce movies like spookies. So these guys, so it was actually, it was the two guys, right? What was it? Uh, Faulkner and, uh, Faulkner and Doran and Doran. 
and they wanted to make a different movie, if I remember correctly. I don't remember if you know the title. There was something else that they were trying to get made, but they had somehow run into uh, Michael Lee, who said, I'll finance that movie if you do something I can distribute really quick for cheap. Right. So, he had he had half a movie he had, and he wanted them to finish it so he could distribute it, and then he would finance the movie they wanted to make. Okay, so you're this saying... This guy's king of, like, I have half a movie. Can we make another half of this movie and just put it out there? <laughs> but that half movie didn't figure... It, that's not Twisted Souls. No. Okay. Different movie. So they wrote this, like, overnight or something, right? It's like, okay, we got people in a haunted house. Go. Yeah. Wrote a Basically. script... And then they're like, okay, so we're going to pack off and go up to New York. They get the actors together, and they make this movie Twisted Souls. Mm-hmm. Okay. So why didn't, or like, what, so how, how come they didn't finish Twisted Souls? Um, in making, I mean, I think they, for the, for the most part, quote unquote, finished it. At one point, they had like a two and a half hour cut of this movie. Um, but Mike Lee uh, is... Uh, for all intents and purposes, a great businessman, but he knows nothing about movies and doesn't really care. He'll say that himself. <laughs> like um, about them or just how to make them or doesn't know, right. has, has no good taste. Doesn't know how to make them, doesn't have the slightest idea. But for some reason, he will buy he it. Get, That's what's he, important. Yeah, exactly. He got on the asses of the directors and even in the editing room and started forcing his ideas onto the production because of what he thought would be good to sell this movie. That's really the best way to make movies. I mean, honestly. It really is. Just come in one day, (laughs) look at everything and be like, no, you should do this. You should cut it this way. You should put farting noises in this. I knew it. Absolutely. I knew that was his his idea. (laughs) Uh, It's like, boys, boys, you know what we need here? We need fight. These monsters should fight. That's not a very good. He's uh, British. He's He's British. British, That's right. (laughs) So... Um, so, and eventually, um, uh, enough of the crew uh, had it up to here with them, and they walked off set. Basically, everybody at that point. Um, and uh, and then because um, he Mike Lee didn't like some of or most of what they had, he hired uh, what Eugenie Joseph, or Eugenie Joseph convinced him to come in and direct more material for the movie. Um, before they distributed it, and that's the the bookends of the movie and the Catman that you see running around in the middle of it. So, Jeannie Joseph, the way that I heard this, I mean, I don't know if this was uh, confirmed because her IMDb is uh, light. Let's put it that yep. way. Uh, she came from the porn world. She had been in porn and had directed porn. And this is apparently where, like, the whole, like, New York porn scene got involved in the movie. <laughs> yes. Like, so these are, uh, they're coming in, so they don't really know a whole lot about movies either. They look at right. this two and a half hour, well, the story that I heard was that the two and a half hour cut, um, they had taken, you know, after the directors walked off, and they're just like, fuck you, Michael, Lee. you know, we're done. He yeah. took the movie and showed it, or I think when it was where, where where they blew up at him was he showed it to some distributors, and the distributors are like, you know, we can't, it, we, you know, there's some promising things in here, but this is too long, it's too boring, blah blah blah, and so that's when the, basically there was this big fight. They left and left him with the movie. He said, well, what yeah. am I going to do? So he hires uh, Eugenie Joseph to come in and look at the movie and figure out how you would fix this two and a half hour movie it's two and a half hours right i have to imagine that you could cut a 90 minute movie out of a two and a half hour movie because we're saying that they actually they finished shooting twisted souls yeah right so that means that that movie had a beginning a middle and an end it might not have been good but it had (laughs) a beginning middle and an end right right so what happened when g joseph got a hold of the movie I mean, she ended up, uh, they ended up writing more material and uh, uh, filming and edit. I mean, she's also the quote unquote editor on this movie um, and filming some more material for it and transforming it uh, into what we have now, Spookies. Well, she looked at it the way I hear it. She looked at the movie and said, well, here's a bunch of stuff that doesn't work. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. And so basically after she was done cutting it down to the material that she believed worked, she had 45 minutes of usable footage. Sounds about right. And so that's when she said, well, you know, 
if you give me some money, Michael, I'll go and shoot more material that we can kind of beef the running time up with. Is this a ploy by Jeannie Joseph to make, you know, basically to make uh, her own movie and cut it into an existing property? <laughs> you know? uh, I, I think so. She was... Um even people who have worked on the movie said she was the worst thing she was, was opportunistic. So yes, she was definitely um, trying to get her way into uh, making films. And this is the path she decided to go. Did she do anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think this is the last thing on there. There might've been a, a one other movie after this in 2011, maybe, but no, this was under, under her name, Eugenie Joseph. Um, I don't, she has a few other names and I haven't checked on that, but I think this is it. Okay. I thought there had been like at least one other film. There might be one other, but, uh, here we go. Uh, mind benders in, uh, 1987. Oh, so she's directed three movies, uh, spookies, mind benders and pheromone in 2010. So there you go. That's the other one. <laughs> She's still out there doing something. What about the other guys? Did they ever, did this completely ruin their careers or uh, did they recover? Um, I think, uh, um, let's see, uh, Brendan Faulkner, I think, worked on a few other things, but Tom Doran um, pretty much, he tried to get work off of this, but uh, it pretty much tanked his career <laughs> after this. No one would give him work. Uh, because they wouldn't give them any of the, uh, they never got any of the, like the two and a half hour cut, the material that all the stuff they shot, they never got it. And so he didn't have much to show anybody that he could actually direct a movie. Is this stuff all just uh, uh, destroyed? Is that what it's gone. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. Uh, it looks like uh, together Faulkner and uh, Dornan, Doran both Doran. did uh, Killer Dead in uh, 1992. Okay. So they tried one more movie, and I believe they even had uh, the older guy from this movie, the guy who played, we're saying, the dad, uh, was in that movie. <laughs> the news anchor. Yeah. Okay, so this is a schizophrenic melding of two movies that don't fit together at all. Um, and they're just kind of oh. like bashed together like a car collision. So they're mangled up. There's a piece like there's pieces in there where there's shards of glass and little bits of mangled bone and flesh and metal all integrated. But basically, they're is that a good metaphor? Maybe, uh, you know, with what's sure. it, uh, Twix or whatever, the peanut butter and the chocolate. Well, so that's good though. That I like the go. car crash better because you don't know <laughs> which car. Yes. It's like it's like two of the almost same car crash into each other, and you just can't tell which piece is which. There you go. Yeah, Twix makes it sound like they complement each other, and they right. Yeah. I wanna, yeah. Twix are delicious. Yeah. This, I mean, <laughs> this movie I don't think is delicious, but no. don't do Twix like that. Don't do Twix like that. <laughs> yeah, we want them to sponsor the show someday. We can't be <laughs> smirch them like that. Right, they're gonna look back on this and be, this would be like them finding our old tweets about racism and shit. <laughs> like, we can't we can't involve them in this right now. <laughs> Not that we have done that. You're just really saying as an illustrator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Okay, so maybe is the best way to attack this to like briefly go through uh S twisted souls. And then go through spookies and then explain like how the two are intertwined or how do you want to do this? That sounds complicated. I think we just start. I mean, that's from, not the movie I watched. Okay. No, yeah. I think we just got to do spookies. Okay. Like, I think we, we gave our backstory on the, the difference, but I think we have to just come at spookies yeah. as it is. Yeah. Okay. So as it is, we are introduced to a, uh, is he a sorcerer? <laughs> Uh, there's this guy who speaks. All of his dialogue is uh, is um, dubbed over something, and so it makes him sound like he's talking through like a cardboard tube. It's a German cardboard tube, which is really irritating. I mean, it sounds like there's something <laughs> wrong with the audio. It doesn't sound like it's a you know like a post production effect. It feels like a. It sounds like a mistake. Right when you're watching, it's this old dude lives in the basement. Of a mansion? It's like a, the greenhouse part of a mansion. There's windows and shit. I don't know. Is he living in another dimension from the actual action that's happening? I don't know. No, there would be portals, Colin. Duh. So his name is Cronin or 
Well, what is it? Okay, I, I didn't even... look in the credits. Okay. I don't remember his name. So... I have no idea. I don't know anyone's name in this movie. I was going to say, I don't think I could tell you anyone's name in this movie. No, nope. I don't know one name. I think there's Carol and Duke. How can we forget Duke? Oh, Duke, yeah. Okay, yeah. one. Because he Duke, said yeah. it a lot. That's why. Right. <laughs> He's like the John Travolta of the group. You don't do um, him well, like that. Hey, don't hey, do hey, also hey, like that. Duke is all no. dressed up. What is that? I mean, it's not PVC. Is it just it's plastic? Leather. Leather. Pleather? When we were watching this on YouTube five years ago, it looked like he was just wearing trash bags. It still does. <laughs> yeah. With zippers. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, so he's like from the punk scene or something. That's where it's like this movie is trying to be diverse in the way that it puts all these characters together who you're like, how did the stuffy 50 year? That's probably wrong. He's like a 40 year old dude. Right. And his wife end up hanging out with uh, this like punk rock dude and his girlfriend and this British chick and this other guy. And you're like, and then one of them. I has, grew up with these people. And yeah, and you go, what? Okay, Sean's got a theory though about how they all know each other. Uh, well, the theory was that, uh, like I said, they all met at a party. The the Duke, obviously, who has a, a anger problem, got into a fight. Really? And uh, <laughs> clearly, from the way he tries no, no, to no, enter they, doors, they, yeah. they grew up with Homeboy, these people. Homeboy literally, he literally turns around. And he's like, "Why is that door there?" And smashes a chair on it <laughs> just because it exists. That's my favorite cut of this movie. He's just like, he bangs on it lightly. It cuts away and it cuts back and he smashes a fucking chair on it. <laughs> like, goddamn door. Well, the sorcerer is like laying in wait in this big, uh, uh, his whole thing, I guess like that whole uh, plot line of the, the additional material mm -hmm. is that he's trying to bring his dead wife back from the grave. Yes. Um, but to lead and into this, we get uh, a like this thirteen-year-old kid has run away from his house because his parents forgot about his birthday. He wants to have a birthday party. He meets this guy out in the woods who asks him for a light. Like a bunch of the kids are running around smoking cigarettes, I guess. So this dude asks for a light. The dude is then attacked by a cat man who looks kind of like Nightcrawler from the X Men movies. <laughs> Catman Crothers. Are we sure he was a Catman? <laughs> what do you? What was going on here? He is a Catman because at one point he meows, and one point he purrs. He's yeah, a flat out cat. Okay, because I looks thought like brown face. Originally, my take on it was that this guy was a shapeshifter, right? And then maybe he was the dude that was in the woods asking for the light from the. But no, he kills that guy for no reason. Yeah, yeah, because we see that guy come back as a zombie. Right. But the guy does shapeshift at the end, our cat man. Right. So it's like, I don't know. Who knows what the rules are? Who cares? You're just along for the ride. You're not supposed to remember this later. The kid goes to this mansion, which it turns out is actually a historical mansion somewhere in New York. It was uh, owned by, uh, I believe it was John Jay, who was one of the yeah. founding fathers of the United States. He was uh, the first chief justice on the Supreme Court. He was also the second uh, governor of New York, and this is his house. So that's where we're shooting. Apparently, it was in disrepair when the uh, film crew moved in there. And so this is the house. So the kid sneaks into the house, and he finds the sorcerer in the basement or whatever the fuck, right? Well, he finds a birthday party. Right. Kind of like a nightmare, in, one of those Nightmare on Elm Street movies, right? right? If, if, if my kid was this dumb, I'm sure his parents just thought, hey, if we don't mention his birthday, he'll probably just forget it because he's <laughs> dumb. It, to me, this felt like a scene that would have been in the 2017 It Part 1. <laughs> right. A little bit. Yeah, yeah he'd be, and then Pennywise shows up. But instead, it's a head in a box. It's the sorcerer's head in a box. The kid runs out into the woods where he's attacked by the cat man who forces him down into a grave and then buries him alive. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so dumb. Story. <laughs> Now, this is intercut. You, you made it sound way more logical than how it actually happens, Colin. I mean, is that what you yeah. got out of it? Well, now I'm on my third fucking three and a half because I actually did on YouTube. Somebody tried to recreate Twisted Souls by cutting all the spooky stuff out of it. That's right. You can find this on YouTube under Twisted Souls. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. But am I right on this? I mean, this is, this is what we're saying happened. This is what happened. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm Dumb just kid. saying the way it happens is stupid. That's well, all. because it's Dumb intercut with, with the two other storylines, the kids are right, kids, the people, the, the, the partier, <laughs> the partiers arriving at the house. 
uh, encountering right. a downed tree on the way. But like this cat man just like scratches his face a little bit and the kid falls in the grave and just lays there and lets himself be buried alive. Uh, 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 I can't. He's, a, yeah. he's a dumb child. Like Sean said, the dirt is very heavy. Dirt is heavy. But like those scratches were like my cat's bitten me and scratched me worse than that. It's a demon cat guy or something. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> don't think about it. We're moving on. That's right. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> so, this is what the movie's saying to you. No, no, no. Right, you you the, just want to concern yourself just like, no, about what's it. happening on the screen right now. So, we find that the sorcerer is trying to resurrect his wife. This beautiful blonde woman in a wedding dress is in a coffin who's apparently dead. True or false? I don't know. Apparently, being slowly brought back to life. By the, he needs the, the he needs the souls of the partiers. Okay, okay. So because when they get there, one of the first things that you do whenever you're going to have like a good party, right, is you got to immediately find the Ouija board. This is important, and they do. They do indeed. Duke finds it. <laughs> right. So aggressively, he aggressively finds it. <laughs> they they have to use the Ouija board. So this is, I don't know, this is where we're in our setup stage here because this is where we're going to lay in like what's actually going to happen for the movie, right? This happened in Evil Dead. They find a book, they read it, the spirits come out. In this one, we find a Ouija board only in the reshoots, right? Because you can kind of see how this played, right? Without the sorcerer thing. In the, in the right. original movie, they come there, they find the Ouija board, and uh, then crazy shit happens. But this one, they've dubbed over, like, it's this really awkward scene where it keeps cutting to the sorcerer, like, in the netherworld or whatever, going, like, you know, they ask a question of the Ouija board, and we cut to a close-up of his face as he says, yes, no, 24. You know, how, how old am I? 24. Then the Ouija board moves to 24. What do you think of the makeup effects that are going on here with the throbbing vein? On this guy's head. <laughs> so that's a good throbbing vein. Uh, this old man has a very young back neck, though. I will say that. <laughs> you know how I think they got the, this plot thing of the, the quote-unquote sorcerer? How? Mm-hmm. Okay. Later on in the movie, there is a scene where our protagonist, our protagonist, it turns out, is not Duke, the younger guy who's all coated in uh, trash bags, or a final girl. It turns out that our protagonist is the old dude, which has got to be like one of the movie firsts, right? The tweety old guy who's like one of the most boring performers in the world is the actual hero of our story. He goes into a, they go into a room, you know, because this house has a bunch of rooms. Eventually they're running away from all these creatures and they end up in this room, which has a bunch of occult paraphernalia. And on the wall is a photo or a portrait of presumably the home's original owner. Okay. Mm. I think, and then because then there's some backstory about like he must have owned this house and maybe he found out a way to contain the demons and blah blah blah. And if we look through all of his books, whatever. Whenever they cut to the painting on the wall, they have a painting of the actor that they hired in the second portion of the movie. I think this yeah. was the scene where they were like, "This is what we're going to base the whole thing on." They mm. and there's this little bit of exposition about like this sorcerer. Bam! We're going to put a sorcerer in the movie, and we're going to change that shot on the wall. So whenever, whenever we cut to it, it's going to be the actor from the the reshoots, and this will tie it all together. Did it work? All right. So they just extrapolated from <laughs> that little piece of the original movie, and and went off of there. So they are connected. Is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. It is. It is one cohesive movie. Is what you're telling me? There you go. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and and because much of the runtime, it seemed to me, was the cat, uh, the cat person, um, creeping around through the house, um, knocking on doors and holding doors shut so people couldn't get through them and all this other stuff. Because the flip side of that, which was shot years beforehand, right, 1984 when they started shooting this movie, was yeah. You know, they go into a room and like they'd be pounding on the door and like, don't answer it, don't answer it. There's something, you know, on the other side of that door. In the reshoots, they shot to show that it's the cat guy creeping. He's been holding on to the door. So you always see the cat guy moving into position to do something to open a door or to knock on a door, scratch on a door, whatever, that our characters in the original original shot, Twisted Souls movie, are reacting to. Right. Did you buy it? Genius, right? (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, come on. It fits together. It's like a puzzle. It's perfect. perfect. It's got to be. I mean, come on. That's got to be fun to put together. Be like, look, look, it fits so perfectly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how you pad out a movie from 45 minutes to what is this uh, hour and 25 or something like that? I think is the. Yeah. Hour 25. Okay. Exactly. But the real reason that you're here and the real reason that this movie has any kind of cult uh, status is because of the monsters. Would that be fair uh, to I say? Would, I would think so. Yeah, that is fair to say. Okay. Because the guys who made Twisted Souls actually did go and um, create um, some... I think this is... This is I'm mean, like not even being facetious here. This is the strength of the movie. As a demo yeah, reel for absolutely. your creatures like this is a pretty you figure that these guys probably got work right yeah oh yeah the makeup effects guys do we know who yeah. they are uh offhand i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of italian names on the back of this thing um well, i know one of them is uh, in offhand. the movie i think right or maybe not maybe i'm wrong i thought one of them was the guy who got pulled into the grave grave you know the headstone comes up and writes his name on it and he gets sucked into the ground that might have been one of the effects guys. I'm not sure. A lot, a lot of people played double roles in this movie. Um, there's some effects guys. I think it was one of the muck men, one of the farting muck men. <laughs> Tell me uh, about the muck men. Okay, so this is one of the creatures uh, the that we meet. What is this? Well, I mean, our, our characters start, like, uh, as, as you do, uh, after their friend is uh, uh, possessed right in front of them. Um, they all very calmly, calmly, right, Holly? Too calm? Maybe? Very calmly. Very yeah. calmly decide to uh, explore the rest of the house. Uh, to try and find a way out. So they all split up. You have Duke and, uh, is it Carol or Carol's the other one? No, Carol's the other one. Duke and his girlfriend go off and explore, um, the British chick and her gay boyfriend. They go off and explore. Um, didn't she and, go running out the front door at one point? Oh yeah. They did try to escape. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's where the aforementioned uh, gravestone pops up and sucks a guy down into the, into the earth. Right. Yeah, and okay. then they try and run back inside, and they stop in front. Did anybody else notice that they were ducking and looking around and acting weird before they turn around and ran inside? Mm -hmm. uh, there were supposed to be ghosts and shit flying all around them, <laughs> but that never oh, made it into man. the movie. So it's just oh, them ducking, that's such cowering, a shame. And then for no reason, running huh? inside for no reason. Because there are every kind of spooky in this movie. Yes. It's the spookies. Yes. Yeah. The spookies. Who is your favorite spooky, Holly? My favorite one? I kind of like that little gargoyle gremlin thing. That the little green monster? thing. The snake monsters who crawled all yeah. over. The there was something about it. It was kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Sean just said snake monsters, plural. Were there There's supposed to be more monster, more than one there? There's two. Okay, so she's. A, this is what? Yeah, yeah there's two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I thought there was one. I wasn't. And then I thought there were two, and then I thought there was one again. There's a scene where the British woman is in this room, and oh, there's something in the room with us. And then these like gargoyle monsters attack. They're actually pretty cool sculpted things. They have motorized yeah. eyes and all this. Um, and they attack her. She ends up grabbing like a fire poker or something and stabbing the thing. That, like it takes a chunk out of her neck and it's hanging on her back. She's on the floor and she pokes the thing, which I'm not even entirely sure that that happened because just the way it was cut together, I'm like, wait, is she, can she do something to it? And then I'm like, oh, in the shot of the thing, I think that black thing mm -hmm. over in the side is it being poked. I'm like, yeah, oh, they don't, yeah. they don't show insertion. Yeah. Just, uh. Or even the just, ugh, just you know, fluids. Nothing. Do, do you need to say insertion? Is that no necessary, Sean? No insertion, don't. just fluids. <laughs> you know, strangely, for an 80s movie, uh, no real sex or uh, nudity in this. No? Yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, maybe that got cut out in the two and a half hour cut, but I don't think I so. Gonna, I don't think it's a big I was going to ask if. I was going to ask if that got cut, but and then you said that the one director was in the, worked in porn a lot, right? She directed a lot of porn. Well, I don't know about a lot, and this is uh, anecdotal stuff. Oh. But they said that yeah. she had had a background at yeah. Yeah, they saw a yeah, lot of people have been on sets of porn and shit for this movie. Yeah. 
In the 80s oh, in New York, that was just a thing. I mean, people went back and forth between, yeah, okay, so. Is that, is that your Jewish New York voice? Uh, is that <laughs> is that what we were getting right there? Was that Gilbert Gottfried or something? I don't know what I was doing. There. No, that was, that was more uh, Mark Marin. Oh, okay. Um, I do know who he is. I've listened to his show. So, um, Continuing to explore the house. Right. So oh, there's other monsters we, that they. If we forgot to mention uh, uh, Pete and his puppet, there's a puppet in this movie, uh, like an actual puppet puppet. Not talking monsters yeah. here. Talking a man. A and hand puppet. puppet. A, a hand, hand puppet. puppet. Yeah. Mookie the hand puppet. Well, if you don't Why? take your puppet just to a cause... party, you're just not doing it right. How else are you going to show his quirky personality, Allie? <laughs> uh, there's for so all... many other ways. For all intents and purposes, um, uh, that guy with the puppet is is the guy you see on screen. Um, that's what everyone says, but everyone absolutely loved him. Uh, he was kind of <laughs> I, I see Holly's face. He's like, really? <laughs> um, but uh, he he was very loved on set. Uh, very funny, um, despite well, cool, the performance. But, that the movie. His <laughs> voice. No. but he has a puppet I, in the movie. You just can't I, let someone do with it because you like them, right? Yeah. I want to know what guy was the puppet his I, idea? I think so. <laughs> I mean, he I, I would guess so. He had if you saw his shirt, it was a print of him and the puppet on his shirt. Oh, okay. Well, that explains so probably. That's what made me hate it even more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there was layers to it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but they uh, so they're continuing to look through the house. Um, Duke and his girlfriend meet the muck men, the farting <laughs> muck men. This is where the uh, the uh, Fisting chickens comes in. I was going to ask if that's where it came in. (laughs) Yes, that is where there's an (laughs) there's an interesting soundbite on the uh, making of documentary for this movie about how they got the sounds for the farting muck men. And so the sound guys on camera talking about uh, oiling up his hand and this fucking dead chicken. Wait, what? (laughs) Yeah. And he and he looks at the camera and he wants sincerely wants PETA and all the animal rights people to know that it wasn't a live chicken. He doesn't condone fist fucking live chickens or any other animals <laughs> unless it's consensual. Uh, he really wanted to get that across. Um, so that is in the documentary. So okay. there's there's no way they could have just bought stock fart sounds to use, huh? They had to hire this guy to to do that. Whether they had to or not, they did. Innovative. That's what we're talking about here. These are people pushing the boundaries oh, of uh, the frontiers. People. Of yeah. filmmaking, so we have muckmen who are who are dissolved in uh, water slash wine. I kind of like, like the. the um, I feel like they got. I feel like they got like a back alley foley artist to do that, <laughs> right? Hey. Like he opened up his trench coat and it's right. full of right. chicken. Hey, come here! I got fat noises. I, want, you know, $5 I got wet. Pot. I got dry, long, short. Good deal. <laughs> Real juicy stuff. <laughs> They are real wet farts, and they're nonstop. No, they're machine gun farts. <laughs> and this was something that was put in after the fact, right, by uh, Michael Lee's in the editing room. Said like, "Yeah, let's uh, put the, this is just going to be temporary." And then uh, the sound mixer thought it was hilarious, and so it's in the I movie. I think it was the sound mixer's idea, and then Mike Lee loved it. Yeah. But so to his end. credit, I guess uh, everybody who, like, if anyone who's seen this movie, that's the thing. It's the movie, it's got the farting mud monsters in it, you know? Yeah. But it's like, it clearly, the sound effect doesn't belong in the scene. It breaks up whatever the intention <laughs> the, you know, filmmakers originally had. Right. Um, I like the Spider Woman. This is a pretty elaborate dealio. Spider later. Woman's pretty great. That's my favorite one for sure. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is how I like, the I like uh, the ending of the Spider Woman. It's gross too. Well, it it, yeah, it um, has she's, that she's level ugly. where it hits, you know, like the gore, and then there's the like, well, it's this beautiful Asian woman in a like tunnel full of cobwebs. Our hero with the uh, uh, the puppet, whatever the fuck his name is, the hippie looking dude, wanders down there, and she beckons him in, and then he gets stuck in a web. And she begins to transform. First of all, it's her face. Then her head like splits open. Then there's all sorts of like uh, a covering on her brain that's undulating and moving. I thought maybe like a third eye was going to come out or some other kind of thing. Her face gets all shriveled up and she turns. Then she starts sprouting these gigantic arms. 
and then uh, through her mouth, which then starts, you know, salivating and keeps opening and the fangs come out and this monster like shoots out, hits him in the stomach. And that's where you know, when she turned into the thing, I'm like, okay, this is, you know, that's pretty cool as it is. It just keeps going. It hits him in the stomach and then it like you get a close up of his face as it seems like the life gets like sucked out of him and he uh, gets sucked dry. Yeah. And he, yeah. He, his head collapses, this, you know, like they suck yeah, the, all the air out of it. It's like the guy from Starship Troopers, except they sucked it through his body and not his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Her head gets real like bulbousy and heavy. Like it looks like her neck can't hold it up. It gets, it's so <laughs> yeah. gross. There's a lot of like head stuff in this movie. Yeah. Like splitting heads, pulsating heads. There's a lot of head stuff. Faces mm-hmm. dissolved by uh, acid or whatever the hell that was that one woman. It was dissolved by yeah. red and magic lightning. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Because there's another that's creature that just shows up for a brief period of time. It's this big uh, reptilian-looking green thing that shoots electric bolts. This is my second favorite one. Yeah, this one's good. I'm kind of sad it's only in there for that one brief scene. Yeah. It has like, tentacles. Yeah, yeah and, and it's it got like, like a exposed, exposed heart. heart. Yeah, yeah. It was all that's glistening cool. and kind yeah. of gross. Like for yeah, what like, these oh. guys. For what they were able to pull off on this budget and probably under, you know, the time constraints, I can only imagine, like, this is some pretty decent work. Now, I mean, some of it, I would say, you know, especially as a big Grim, Grim Reaper that shows up uh, toward the end that's chasing them through the house, has big glowing eyes, kind of look like something you can find at a spirit Halloween store, you sure. know. But still, even for then, there were no spirit Halloween stores. So all this was sculpted and, you know, and built. And animate, you know, the fact that they went to the detail of putting the little uh, uh, moving eyes in that little reptilian uh, snake monster thing. Yeah. It's that kind of level of detail that kind of like elevates it over like, okay, well, we just threw something together. However, the second uh, the second crew that came in and did the second part, the second movie, basically, right? The, the cat man. They threw in the cat man and didn't the, the wife of the sorcerer after she's brought back to life and is like, I don't want to be with you. You got to kill me. Like, I don't want to be here. That's the whole thing. He's in love with her. She hates him. He brings her back to life and she just wants to get away from him. Uh, She escapes through like a a tunnel or cave or something. Isn't there like a soul sucking rubber harpy thing in there that, Oh, yeah. She goes into a cave and there's like a, a la- it looks like the thing from Poltergeist kind of uh, It's like a laughing sharp demon type thing, like a, a, a another bride looking thing. I don't know. It's hard to describe. Well, to me, that one was clearly made by a different special effects crew than the other one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Definitely. Well, I believe it's Carol. Carol's the girl who was using the Ouija board who got possessed, right? Mm-hmm. Her eyes begin to glow. Her face changes, gets all wrinkly, and she ends up shooting. So there is there is a climax that this that Twisted Souls is working to that we never get to see. Am I right? Like, it's just at some point there's a scene where a lot of lightning sparkler shit explodes. Well, this is after our anchorman uh, has found the most unique way to leave a room. Uh Another moment, which I thought, think is great. Um, they get attacked by, like you said, the, uh, the the Grim Reaper. And this is where Duke meets his end, I guess. Uh, he gets sliced in the face. And then the anchorman jumps up on the and is like, move, gotta get through the door. And he just jumps head first through a door. <laughs> a closed door, you're saying. A closed door. A closed door. Yeah, well, that's right I mean. through it. And he's perfectly fine. Gets everyone else out. Um, yes. And then they finally make their way down to a room with Carol, the final room, as it were. Um, and then she, uh, oh, at this point, the, um, the sorcerer gives control of everything that's going on to his son, the little boy in the hood. Who just, this shows up, this kid painted yeah. blue with fangs. Okay. Yeah. He's like, this is our son. Hope. <laughs> what were you hoping for? I was like, oh, this reminds me of Phantasm. Like the little dwarfs are around Phantasm uh, with brown coats. Cause he was a brown coat running around in a cemetery. And I was like, oh, cool. That's oh, probably where they stole dead. the idea from. Very true. From Phantasm. Yeah. Well, it turns out that the little boy and presumably the cat man are the offspring of the the beautiful bride in the coffin, right? Because even though she's dead, 
she was dead, right? I don't know. She's still, she's still popping out babies, apparently. Yeah, he's Demon still babies. getting her to pop. So the impression I had, correct me if I'm wrong, all of the spookies are alluded to be her offspring. True or false? I guess. <laughs> it could be. There's nothing to say that I... you're wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure because I, I thought they were driving that point home because when she finally escapes, she stabs the old geezer in the head and he bleeds all over the place and he dies and she escapes. And then all of a sudden there's zombies popping out of the graveyard and one of them calls her mama, mama. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, so we're saying that everything is her kid. It looks like a clown though. They do do that. It does kind of look like a clown, a demented a bit, yeah. Uh, That's, clown. Yeah, the worst part of it. And which point, I don't, I, I don't necessarily know if they're all her children, but it does say mama. Well, I'm not sure what the original intent of the movie was, right? The original Twisted Souls, was it supposed to be there was a sorcerer who lived in the house who summoned the devil or summoned summon all these creatures. The house is possessed. We find the, the spirit board and somehow... Uh, it wakes up the evil dead, right? And they begin manifesting themselves in the house. I assume right. that was what they were going for. That all right. gets yeah, subverted. Because there's there's that scene where the the sorcerer is talking to whoever, and he's like, "They're all my children, and I'm their lord." So I think they're thinking of her as their mother in that respect. That he's like their quote unquote father, when so that would make her their mother. But I, I don't. I think it's like you said. I think they just summoned something. I don't think they're actually their children. They're no. just like their spiritual children, I guess. Okay, so we're just saying that the little kid is their actual child. Would you like yes. to that's meet? The, wait, hold on. Let that's me try the only to do one. It. I think. Yeah. Would you like to meet your son? I don't know if that's. <laughs> Can you get a good laugh in there? He had a good laugh. <laughs> good enough. Okay. More German, please. More German. <laughs> How do you laugh German, Sean? Uh, next question. Um, so, so the movie uh, uh, becomes. I mean, it does. It it kind of it it for the for the Twisted Souls ver- part of the movie. It does kind of end, but we don't see the aftermath. I mean, they all get attacked in a room with Carol with aging beams or what have you, and he does get the the vial of potion. Apparently, is something needed to get, and he throws it at Carol. And then the fireworks go off, and, and then, then that's cut. it. Yeah, then we cut to the other story. So there's, yeah. it really feels like, okay, we're just we're moving on from that now. I liked it when Michaela, when we were watching it, is like, you know, because then it becomes a music video, like a, a thriller really thing or something. And she's like, is this the, the rest of the movie? I'm like, yeah, we've just forgotten about that whole other thing that we were doing with the people in the house of the, <laughs> you know, yep. the Ouija board. <laughs> that's over. We're moving on. <laughs> Now it's about a pretty girl in a graveyard getting chased around by zombies for 15 minutes set to rockin' 80s uh, synth music. Yep. This goes on. Too long. Forever as she runs from, I mean, obviously they have like a wide field or something. There's people, you know, ghillie suits or something that pop up and go, boo, I'm a zombie. And then they're they're just kind of all playing zombie tag or something. It's a zombie keep away. Yep. It's yeah, because they're not of, fast moving. No, yeah, it's no. a bunch of redneck flannel zombies. Yeah, a lot of flannel zombies. A lot of flannel zombies. Yeah. Well, this culminates in a scene where she finds this uh, guy. Or she finds a car. Why a car would be here? Uh, who knows? Whatever. It's, you know. And he's like, "Hey, lady, what are you doing on my car?" And she's like, "Oh my god, there's zombies everywhere!" And so he's like, "Well, move over. I'll drive." And so he gets in, and they get away from the zombies, and we're like, "Okay, here we go." Then she's like, I finally got away from the creepy old dude who brought her back to life and loves her so much that he won't let her die. And uh, then we hear a voice that says, but you didn't get away. And she turns and looks at the guy and boom, poof, he turns into the cat man who says that he's always loved her. And we go, what? And then uh, we see a gravestone that explodes and the sorcerer pops out of it and goes, <laughs> That was better. Freeze frame <laughs> credits. And we sit there going, what the holy hell have you done to a shot? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have to entertain you in quarantine, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get when I am in isolation. 
<laughs> Let me ask you a question. Did you have you did you watch the movie once you got it the the Vinegar Syndrome disc or have you yes, been sitting yes, on did. it for tonight? Okay, so you're three no, times through this movie too. Um, um, this would be one, two, yeah, this is the third time through it. Okay. Okay. So I had to do it for the freak show. And then, uh, Travis, when he got the Blu-ray had to watch it again, that was like a month ago, Sean, oh, two months you? ago before <laughs> quarantine. Hey, that's and not my here fault. Here we are again. Colin, you're an adult. You make your own choices. No one forced you to I, watch it. I don't. I was Colin, overruled. Colin I, feel like, Colin, I feel like every time any of us pick a movie, you're like, I just watched that. Yeah, right, well, this it is true. All the time. I do just watch everything. <laughs> okay, so um, I tell you what, listener, you probably want to know what we thought about Spookies and whether we would recommend it to you. I know we've been playing our cards close to our chest. You really don't know. Tonight was the first time that both Holly and Michaela saw the movie. Did they like it? Did they hate it? You're going to find out. But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to need the help of our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Uh, thank you, Igor. How about those snake monsters or his like cousins or something? Probably. I, I was thinking I, he reminded me of Catman. <laughs> it's got that stature, yeah. The but face, like, though. Who, who's the slobs for snuffs in that situation, you know? <laughs> So we're saying that the bride, the bride sees the mama family? too. Mm. Yeah. Well, at least he doesn't I mean, fart as much as some of them, so it could be worse. True. That's what I'm saying. True. And he doesn't. And maybe the guys didn't smell because nobody reacted to the the smell of the farts. Like in the basement, nobody went like, "Oh my god, they smell." Yeah. Okay. I'm dying of farts. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, listener, if you want to join the Freak Show family, and we hope that you do that you do. Uh, you can follow along with us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Spookies. MF Mad writes in and says, this might be the best and worst thing you guys have ever done. <laughs> I can't wait for the review. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Robin, Sean, you really stirred some shit up in the mailbag with this. <laughs> Apparently so, because Robin Lineman Silverberg says, so freak show rules are amendable? Apparently. You have to bring your legislation to the Senate and uh, present it before us. <laughs> Vote on it. Yeah. Or just, or just pick it and then present your legislation afterwards. There you go. <laughs> uh, Travis Legler says, well, if that's the case, my, may I request a remake of Maximum Overdrive? Would love to. Ooh. I would actually enjoy that. <laughs> Teresa. I, I, I would love to do that one. Well, Teresa <laughs> Ann says, then I want a redo of Creep Show since Sean was absent that week. I'll, yeah. I'll, fuck, I'll redo that too. That would be great. Oh, come you guys are killing me. You're just trying to get my yeah. Okay, it's, pissing we're, we're off. it's working. We're gonna have to just wait a couple years on Creep Show because we just did that. Like no, two what the ago. fuck? Why do we do it again? Well, you should just do Creep Show every week. Okay, Nelson Nashimento writes in and says you can call it Twisted Souls and pretend it's a brand new film. Some interesting effects work to take your attention away from what the hell is going on from two movies mashed together. Sure, mm -hmm. true. That's a nice capsule review right there. Jimbo Ice says. <laughs> I love spoopies. <laughs> All right. Uh, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Serenity. Mars Cobra 18 says Anne Hathaway is super gorgeous. She's a pretty lady. Yeah, she is. She is. That's very true. Well, Andrew John says Jason Clark is quickly becoming my most disliked actor. Everything he's in, <laughs> he's just so bad and forgettable, even with his big potato face. I feel so vindicated. I've been saying that for years. I feel so vindicated. Yes, let the Jason Clark hate flow through you. <laughs> See what the, I don't understand this whole... Is it because when he's in horror movies, he picks bad horror movies? He, uh, Colin, do you remember anything he's in? He was in... Uh, he was. Well, I didn't see it. He was in that Ted Kennedy movie, Chappaquiddick. You didn't see it. Exactly. I, see, I saw White House Down. I saw The Great Gatsby. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to say the Great Gatsby. Yeah. yeah, and he there's also Leonardo DiCaprio in that movie to make up for his deficiencies. Well, I think I've only seen him in bad movies. The last one was like Terminator. Yeah, I was going to say he was yeah. in that shitty Terminator yeah. movie. And the Pet Cemetery. Let's not forget. Uh, he was in Genesis, yeah. which, yeah, is that the shittiest yeah. Terminator movie? And the vote is still out on that. Um, it's pretty shitty. Because the new one was maybe even worse. Okay, so Grant Parrish said about Serenity, this movie looks great. Anne is quaffed and styled beautifully. Maddie is rocking a magic mic level body. Diane Lane is MILF perfection. And then, like, this movie is what's happening. It reminds me of 2013's Adore. Great, gorgeous settings, beautiful, famous people, and then a boring movie about really, really weird sex stuff. Yep. Holly, you need to watch Adore, like, right now. Yeah. You would you you would lose your shit watching that movie. It's on Netflix, I think. Is it? I'm going to put it on my list. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. Naomi Watts and Robin Wright and weird sex stuff. And it's, I'm in. But they it's like, sleep with like each other's Australian kids. Australian beaches. It's like beautiful Australian beaches and like tourism scenery and then weird sex with those two involved. You're speaking my language. There you go. <laughs> For fans of really trashy romance novels comes a door and Serenity, perhaps. Lisa Paget says uh, about the movie. Oh, wait, this is a spoiler, maybe, for um, Serenity. Just jump ahead 15 seconds there. I'll give you a second. You ready? Okay, hit the jump button. She says, yeah, it really does seem implausible, but also, isn't this supposed to be coming from the mind of a child who idolizes his dad and gets his idea from video games? Yeah, yeah. it's hard to remember that when you're watching it sometimes. Yeah. yeah. That actually leads me to, yeah, I remember when we were having this discussion the week before, I was under the assumption that it was an AI in a virtual world. It was the whole thing was a simulation. It was programmed to behave this way, but I can't remember. I think it was Michaela and Holly. Michaela was definitely saying that that the, the Matthew McConaughey was a playable character, and that's why it was weird that he was having sex with Anne Hathaway, which would have been the kid's mom who's playing the game. Yeah. Okay, I didn't and interpret it that way, but maybe honestly, that does make so it weird. fucking yeah. weird. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Press X to fuck. Yeah. I basically assume he's playing like Grand Theft Auto, like, but as his dad. Okay. So yeah, I don't, <laughs> I'm still thinking it was a simulation. Do you fuck the mother. Yeah. Yes or no? Because <laughs> they were she asking, him, "Do you want to do this?" Movie, that white dress looks yeah. great on her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker's got the right idea. He says, "Maybe I'll just watch the Joss Whedon Serenity and pretend I watch this one." Yeah. Sure. You you I actually think like with our episode, it's a case of you should probably actually listen to us first and then watch the movie. And probably. Yeah. Cause then <laughs> at least you'll know the movie that you're getting and you right. won't be disappointed. Um, right. Peter Gatt, after saying that we would have to pay him to listen to that episode, he wrote in and said, I'm wondering why you're still talking about this crappy film. Serenity. Yep. I mean, because that was what I picked that week. <laughs> yeah. That's how it kind of works. I mean, sticks, you don't have to your head, man. Yeah. Um, about the, the, works, man. <laughs> the movie we watched the week before, Bad Taste. Monty Montague says, I finally got around to seeing this, and it is now my favorite Peter Jackson movie okay. by far. Nice. It's an experience for sure. All right. That's a wow, really. But okay. Um. <laughs> Uh, Holly and Michaela, uh, Maximum Overdrive will be available to you in January of 2021. <laughs> oh, Stop it, Sean. Yeah. Stop it. I'll show my show calendar. <laughs> the rules apply then. So Mark well, Sean made up new That's rules. It the has to be five years effect. old. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Goofy. Okay. So, so uh, the fall session, you'll have to wait till next winter. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so now we're going to go around the room. We'll tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, which was spookies. We're going to start with Colin. Probably. No, we don't start with me. If we're going no, we're down the lineup, you. then you start oh, with Holly. Right, right. right. That was, that was Holly. Michaela. Michaela. Why Michaela? No, it's you. Because I did last week. Yeah, but yeah, it's I'll Sean's. Start. I can start. Okay. <laughs> we're taking turns, man. <laughs> it's hard when we're not sitting in the same room That's together right. to um, figure out the order. Michaela. All right. <laughs> Um, so I had never seen this before. I didn't honestly even know what it was about. Knew nothing about it other than Sean had brought it up every once in a while. Like I, I don't Do even you know what it's horror. about now. N- not really. <laughs> 
Um, but like, I don't even really see like horror people I follow online talk about this movie. Like, you guys are saying it's a cult favorite, but like, I'm missing wherever people are talking about this because I don't see it anywhere. Alamo um, Draft House just did a virtual screening of it. That's cool. Um, I I actually I said to my husband after we watched this, I said I don't really know what I'm gonna if I'm gonna recommend it or not because I'm gonna need Sean to explain it to me first. <laughs> oh, what a yeah. tough thing. <laughs> he just kept saying, "What is happening? What is this movie about?" And at one point, he was yeah. like, "At one point, I said that to him, and he said, I don't know. I gave up on this a while ago.'" <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, he would get reeled back in every once in a while, like the Spider Lady. He was like, "Oh, that was really cool," you know. Um, so I guess the way I'm looking at this is, obviously, it's a disaster of a movie, and obviously, it makes no sense. But that's a lot of movies we watch. <laughs> um, and the creatures were really cool, and there was so many of them, like way more than I ever would have thought. I feel like if you if you made one of those like newer kind of like Mondo posters about this movie, you it would be like crammed full of the stuff in this movie, and it'd be so much to draw. But I I guess like when it comes down to a movie like that, when I think about it, would I rather watch this or like Thirteen Ghosts, for example? I'd rather watch this, honestly. Like if <laughs> this is stupid, but. I enjoyed it and I was never bored. I was just like, what the fuck is happening? Um, it's just, it's disjointed as all fuck. And it's, it's obviously very amateur level, but I think that's makes it kind of endearing. So I think I kind of have to recommend it just based on the number of creatures and how cool they were. Holly, do you want to go next? Uh, yeah, wait, I'll go Michaela, next. Michaela, just to convince you further, uh, <laughs> Gary Pullen did some artwork. <gasps> okay, yeah, see, I love that guy. So now <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, well maybe. <laughs> and Richard Corbin did the the original theatrical poster. He did a lot of like heavy metal magazine stuff. Right, yeah. That, yeah. But it's, it. a, it's got a cool poster, which is probably why everybody kid wanted to rent it when it was in the video store. Right. Holly. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, no, Michaela, I, I'm totally in sync with what you're saying. I... I had no idea what the hell is going on this entire movie. I still don't know what was going on. I'm very confused by everything. I don't remember anyone's name. I don't understand what we just watched, to be honest. But that being said, I was never bored. And the fact that we were constantly like, what the fuck is happening was to an entertaining point. You know, sometimes we watch something and we're like, what the fuck is happening? And it's just too irritating. It's like, no, I need more. I need a story. I need something. This was entertaining enough that the what the fuck feature actually works in this case. I was never bored, always entertained, and the monsters are seriously cool. There, there's a ton of them. Like I, at one point, I said during our group chat, um, the amount of monsters in this movie is like spectacular, and that's totally true. I, I love the because they they're so different, you know. I love that they went for it with each one. Each design is is different, and I, I think it's really cool. They worked with a lot of different um, features on the on the monsters, and it, yeah, it was just a fun movie. It was batshit crazy and makes no sense, but it was fun, and I I enjoyed it. I I'm glad that we did a revisit on it. <laughs> I can see I can see why Sean wanted to do a revisit on it. Um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna recommend Spookies. I think it was fun, Callan. I'm what did you think? Uh, floored. I'm shocked. Uh, I can't believe. I mean, well, obviously, like I said, this movie does have a following, so it's because of sentiments just like that that it worked. You know, I mean, it worked on people. I think because it's a gallery of uh, a menagerie of goopy creatures that are fairly well realized in a movie, unfortunately, that doesn't exist. You know, I mean, there is no movie here, and that's, I guess, the problem. This is a horrible, horrible, awful movie with some good makeup work. So it plays as a, as a demo reel for the makeup effects guys. And that's it. So, I mean, either you're in that camp and you want to see it just because it's got cool monsters, which I think is like also why the people want to see Return of the Aliens, Deadly Spawn and stuff like that. And like, it's got a cool creature in it. But yeah, actually, you know what? My opinion really hasn't changed. I'm going to say go back in our episodes to December 19th, 2015 and find out what I thought of spooky Sean, what'd you think? <laughs> Actually, you can find out what Sean also thought. And then you can find out, did he change between then and now let's find out Sean. See, now that is Colin, the businessman right there. Cause he's like, <laughs> we're going to get double the listens on this shit. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give a review. I'm going to send people back to the, the other tease. one. You gotta, you, Genius. Yeah. 
Uh, Genius. Colin, uh, someone who might be on your side for this movie is uh, the cinematographer Ken Kelch. Um, they said when they went to the premiere of this movie um, that when he saw it, he was so distraught um, that he said it was the worst day of his life. And he had been in war where he's had people die in his arms. And he said, this oh was my God. seeing what they did to his movie was well, the worst day of his life. Yeah. But that guy, he said he had the worst day of his life on the set because his, his baby died of crib death while they, either oh, while they were on the set, he and his wife were staying in the that. carriage house. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, wow. Uh, so I mean, spookies, I mean, I think you guys have said it all. Um, uh, I'm a fan of this movie, and uh, one thing I think we need to give credit for, uh, we've already done monsters, I think, are uh, incredible. I think they're great. Um, uh, the other thing I think is, um, I, I find this movie very funny. Um, the uh, They asked the director if um, anything in this movie was cut together the way he had put it in his head, and he said, not a single... Uh, cut from one thing to the other is what it was supposed to be. Not a single one. And I think that editing adds a real funny edge to this movie. Um, uh, and I think that's the other thing that's, that's great about this. I think it's a very funny movie. I mean, the acting, it, it's horrible. Uh, obviously, Colin is right. It's a horrible, bad movie. But because it's that way and because of the acting, because of the editing um, and, and because of some other stuff, uh, I find this movie very entertaining. Um, I also love, uh, I, I find it fascinating the story behind the movie. Uh, I mean, that's why I bought the Blu-ray cause you get all that information. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I find the movie very entertaining. The story behind it, I also think is very entertaining. Um, and I think a lot of you people will find it entertaining too. Uh, I will say that once we get past the twisted souls part of the movie and we get into the music video, uh, I will be shutting it off from now on <laughs> because I can't sit there and watch that uh, zombie horde attack her uh, again but uh, everything else I find extremely entertaining uh, so I will recommend Spookies I recommend it you go out and watch it right now <laughs> also go back and listen to the other episode yeah because what what did he say the first time around what did I say? <laughs> uh-huh, you don't remember do you I don't well, all right. there we go no, Sean's, Sean. pretty, Sean's pretty famous for changing his mind so I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if it's different this time well, right. five really? years, I've had time to marinate clearly you saw it <laughs> Five years ago, and when Vinegar Syndrome came out with it, you're like, man, I got it. Did you get the one with the, whatever, the, the limited cover? Yeah, it looked like it. No, I mean, it's got, it's just, I got the regular DVD. It's got the reversible cover and everything. Oh, okay, because um, they had a slip cover that sold out and is now worth a fortune. <laughs> it was yeah. like the first 500 oh, copies it? or something like that. Yeah, oh, it looked Jesus. like a, a little bit of the poster art. It was the girl with the torn dress on the grave, you know, with the zombies. Yeah, that's the artwork on the other side. Okay. Well, all right. There's Spookies Revisited on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Spookies Rewind. Spookies Reloaded. Spookies Reloaded. Spookies Redone. Spookies, Revelations. Spookies Redux. The Bride of Spookies. Of Spookies. Son of Spookies. Okay. Um, I'm like, what are we going to call this? I don't know. Spooky. Re-spookied. Re-spookies. Yeah. Maybe we do. Just Spookies call this episode again. Twisted Souls. Let it go. Spookies 2 Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. <laughs> well thank you for sticking with us as far you're, you're hanging around because you want to find out what we're going to be covering next week and to find that out we're going to have to ask Holly uh, Holly what are we watching next week next week we're going to watch a fitting movie I think we're going to watch a movie called Virus Ooh. oh man I just watched that like a week no, that's, I'm, not, no, no, no I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm, I've never seen it this is the Jamie Lee Curtis one Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Sutherland, yeah. Okay, I've never seen it, so there you go. All right, awesome. Yeah. Okay, so this is coming our way next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, and until the basement is going dark.